All right, so I guess this is going to be my update video on my lightning strike. Um, I don't really know uh, the path that the uh, current went through the house, how, when, where. Um, don't know why it picked these two charge controllers and uh, didn't take out that cheesy little inverter there. Um, but, uh, you know, the 12 volts bringing in 102 uh, watts right now. Um, you know, this is the afternoon. I just got home from work. It's Sunday. Of course, I worked on a Sunday. Um, this isn't working. I went ahead and put a jumper in here so that uh, I can go ahead and use it because uh, the Outback, since it's grid tied and, you know, battery backup, it actually does its own voltage regulating. So for the most part, all the charge controller does is push as hard as it can. It never actually does its job unless we go off grid or lose power. So right now you can see we're uh, using 400 uh 400 watts and uh, we're selling 200 watts back to the grid and uh, I've had people say be careful of this stuff it'll shock you 24 volts um, I don't feel nothing just a little tidbit so uh, I guess I'll uh, get into what lightning protection I did have and uh, go into what uh, lightning protection I'm going to add so first off uh, these cables here throughout the entire system these are battery grounds are, are battery negatives I'm sorry they're not grounds and they are common to each other even with the 12 volt they all tie together in the entire system but they do not tie to the grounding system which is the green wire it goes to that big huge cable and goes to a 20 foot uh, ground rod in the yard there it's also hooked to this surge, uh, surge suppressor here which uh, takes care of these loads here um, which is maybe why I lost things on other circuits and didn't lose anything here but that also could be because I had the inverter unplugged and running on batteries at the time of the strike and then over here I had two of the Delta lightning clamps um, I'm going to replace those uh, there's not really a way of metering those to find out whether they're okay they're only good for one event so you get struck and they're out and uh, this is all my wires coming down from the roof uh, really large because I started with 12 volt uh, and switched to 24 so I got plenty of capacity as far as adding on later alright the way that I uh, switch off the main array is uh, I shut off just the negatives the positives are actually hooked together and uh, loop up and over and go straight to the charge controllers and then you can see my ground wires here which go up and over and go down there and that's all the grounding for my solder and it's totally separate from the rest of the house it's on its own ground rod. alright now that we're not putting out so much power I'm safe to go ahead and uh, switch my main array to this other ch uh, charge controller here this is another way that I can test and make sure my array is working well it's also handy if you know I need to charge one battery bank more than the other so I'm going to switch it over to that charge controller and then we should watch it uh, start climbing up in the amps. Hopefully it won't overdo it because it's only a 30, 35 amp charge controller. Ooh, we're getting 32 amps. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, so that array right now, uh, late afternoons, uh, it's going down now. I'm sure there's a cloud coming by. Um, and then it shows the amps here that it's putting into the uh, 12 volt battery bank. Just uh, kind of the way I have my stuff set up. It's a little... Uh, a little extraneous, but uh, this is something that I just built over time. Just thought I'd tag this on. Uh, we're up to 424 watts, uh, 32 amps. So we're only 3 amps away from overdoing this charge controller. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch it back over to the 24. But uh, it's just a good test. Uh, it's nice to be able to uh, switch back and forth from one to the other. And off it goes. And then it starts transferring the power right back here again. And you can see it's starting to switch. So we start buying less and supporting more. Um, it's just a funky little setup. Pretty cool, actually. So now for what I'm going to do. Uh, obviously, I'm going to replace these clamps here. And I'm probably going to put in more clamps. Probably put some more up in the attic uh, where it hooks there. I do have a ground system up there as well. Um, well away from the roof, so I know it didn't get a hold of that. Um, probably be putting some clamps on the charge controllers themselves. Uh, they're pretty cheap. I think they're 20, 25, 30 bucks a piece. Um, 
and I'm going to be putting up my lightning rods. Uh, when I get the cabling and all to do that, I'll surely do a video on that. Uh, these are uh, ones that I salvaged off of a house. Uh, they're the old school copper ones. Of course, uh, all lightning rods are old school. They were invented a long time ago. Uh, and they work. I mean, they don't work all the time, but better than nothing. And it's also really cool to, uh, you know, have yourself a simple Faraday cage set up. Um, and be able to keep uh, your electronics and uh, some of your spare components in there. Um, so uh, that's kind of nice. Of course, that thing got cooked. Uh, saw that in the last video. Still stinks in here. Uh, best I could tell, uh, you know, that's uh, what's running on inverter. So nothing happened there to any of that stuff. But pretty much nothing's plugged in. There's a cell phone charger there. And then we get down here. And then, of course, the steamer was plugged in uh, back there. Uh, the ice maker's not plugged in right now, and it did mess that steamer up. And uh, really, there's just nothing plugged in down here. So obviously, the stuff that was on the grid got cooked. Uh, this room here, the old reloading room, um, all of this is uh, off the grid when we're running on batteries. So nothing in here got affected either. Uh, not my vacuum machine, um, case feeders, things like that. Um, so this room was good. Love this room. And uh, of course, the generator did great, which was awesome. So the batteries was something I was never worried about in the event of a lightning strike. Uh, they are about the most robust thing in your system. They, I mean, you can't spike power through them. You really can't do anything to them. Um, so that was never an issue. And, uh, you know, really large cables. Can't push that hard enough. The only reason I'm throwing that in, Gary Mule put up a video where he's trying to run some stuff off an inverter. And, and uh, in my opinion, it's just wire size. Uh, this is uh, four-out cables, uh, two sets of them coming up to the, uh, to the inverters themselves, or to bus bars and then to the inverters. So anyway, I'm going to call it a success. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of funny. Uh, my lightning strike on my house was a success, but uh, truth is, house didn't catch on fire. Um, I'm not going to use my spare charge controllers because they're not exactly the same. Um, they're a little bit different, so I ordered a set of these. Uh, they'll be here sometime midweek, and I went ahead and uh, just bumped it up to the C60 charge controllers uh, just for a little more capacity in the future, or just another charge controller to get blown up in the future. That's pretty wishful thinking, huh? But anyway, I think it was a success. Um, I did have a thousand dollar deductible on my insurance, so I'm really uh, not going to go anywhere there. Uh, most of this will be out of my pocket. But, um, you know, hey, it's live and learn. Um, you can't always predict what your system's going to do, uh, especially in something like a lightning strike. But if you get struck, then uh, maybe we can all learn something. So uh, remember to just do everything you can to. Uh, protect your stuff and, uh, and it will all work out so uh, I appreciate everybody's kind words concerns all that um, it was crazy it's pretty wild to be here I was lucky to be here because I'm usually never here and um, other than that uh, when I put them lightning rods I'll get up with you and I also still have a bunch of guys uh, waiting on a video about charging parameters charging batteries and all that uh, something that I found to be the most confusing thing when it comes to solar, is uh, batteries and charging them, maintaining them, things like that. So uh, you guys have a great night. Hope you had a good weekend, and we'll see you next time.